Welcome to The Takedown, our series of unfiltered conversations with tobacco prevention partners and community members committed to fighting for the first tobacco-free generation. My name is Gustavo Torres, Director of Youth Advocacy with the Campaign for Tobacco-Free Kids. Today, I am joined by Siobhan Sims-Wright, who is the Director of Special Projects for the Alliance for a Healthier Generation. Siobhan, thank you so much for joining us today. Well, thank you for having me. I'm so excited. So um, I have some really great questions and I'm excited to, to talk to you today. Um, so first, can you just introduce our viewers to the mission and purpose of uh, Alliance for Healthier Generation, especially as it relates to health equity? Yes, so we are a national nonprofit with a mission to ensure all young people can develop lifelong healthy habits, no matter where they live or what their life circumstances are. We achieve our mission by providing tools and resources to help schools, and community champions create environments that promote the equity and whole child health. That is great. And, you know, it goes without saying that the Alliance for Healthier uh, Generation is an invaluable partner, um, especially as we really look to connect more with communities and advocates on the ground. Can you dive a little bit deeper into some of the work you've all been doing uh, with schools and districts to create more supportive tobacco-free school environments? Yes, so we have a team. So my team supports schools and districts with a comprehensive tobacco and vaping prevention resources like our tobacco-free district model policy, which helps schools create policies built around supportive discipline. We also have a builder, a policy builder tool to help uh, districts uh, district administrators create it and update their tobacco-free policies with a social justice approach. And then also finally, well not finally, because we have an array of tools and resources, but we also have the Thriving Schools Integrated uh, Assessment, which has a tobacco portion to help schools identify opportunities for uh, to improve uh, uh, and set action plans and uh, track their progress. And that's what I really love um, about the Alliance um, is, you know, the, the Thriving Schools Integrated Assessment really helps to assess readiness, kind of really where we are. And then you have real tools and resources to support community groups in advancing these policies. Um, and I recognize that, um, but more importantly, recognizing um, the schools that are doing some of this really great work. It's truly just great. Yeah, it, it's really exciting when, we, when we're working with those schools and seeing their progress over time and also the sustainability that they provide after we've uh, started to work with them and the actual changes that are happening within their policy systems and environments. Now that school is back, tobacco use and vaping is also unfortunately making its way back into the classroom. What are you hearing from schools and districts about this problem? So we are hearing that districts and schools wanted to revise their tobacco vape policies and implement best practices for supportive discipline with an alternative to suspension. However, we always want to meet districts and schools where they are in the process so that they can implement sustainable changes that will benefit students today and in the future. Traditional discipline practices around tobacco violations tend to be bias, exclusionary, and punishment focused. The supportive discipline model helps schools provide support and accountability to help students reach their full potential. See, for example, when students, a student is caught using tobacco products, they are often suspended out of school, but that doesn't help them change their behavior. It just removes them from the school building and deprives them of their academic support that they need. We have seen this type of policy is ineffective and deepens existing inequities. Mm. Uh, you know, not penalizing and taking young people out of the classroom when the goal is to really keep them in the classroom to learn and figure out better strategies to, to support these young people. So it's so great your approach in addressing um, this issue is just um, truly on the mark and it really hits um, in so many ways that's so important uh, for how we look at um, tobacco policies and um, enforcement of those policies within school systems. Um, so can we, let's, let's, let's dive a little bit deeper into some of the strategies and policies that are most successful in helping kids stay safe and tobacco free. Um, so how can we encourage more um, schools to adopt proven policies and improve their existing strategies? 
So we have uh, a few ways that we do that, a few strategies. We have our assessment, our six-step process model, which helps schools identify and implement evidence-based policies and practices to keep students and their school environments tobacco-free. We also have an annual recognition program called America's Healthiest Schools, which as will be announced a couple of weeks from now, that celebrates educators for prioritizing essential health needs of students, staff, and their families. We recently had the opportunity to partner together on our Youth Advocacy Tour. It was incredible to launch our tour in Portland, Oregon, alongside one of your restaurant partners, Han Oak. Can you go a bit deeper and tell us about the importance of forming these community-based connections? Yes, at Healthier Generation, our approach is very collaborative, partnering with a variety of local, state, and national organizations to paint a more complete picture of a healthy school environment. Our strategy is to identify students' needs and to provide the most comprehensive solution through our Healthier Generation resources and our partner networking. Um, and I think what is really special about this partnership and what we've seen on this tour, especially with, you know, our kickoff point at Han Oak in Portland, Oregon, is the intersectionality of tobacco and so many other issues, right? When we're talking about the health of our young people, um, it's so much broader. And so, you know, kind of building that coalition of, of partners, as you mentioned, on a state, on a local state, you know, national level is, is so vital, but also those cross collaborative partnerships with business. Um, so could you just speak a little bit more about um, uh, those business collaboratives and how um, that really does support changing norms within communities? So yeah, our business collaborative, it, when we think about our approach, it's really important at that local, state, and national level to connect, connect not only with the schools and the communities, knowing that the school is the hub, but also looking at the local businesses or regional businesses that also may affect these environments as well as the influence of, of students and families. So making sure that we connecting with them and really thinking about ways to, um, uh, bridge that connection, but also advance their promotion of healthy foods that they may offer, healthy environments that we want to surround our families and students with, and then also working to, alongside the school so that we're modeling healthy behaviors on both ends from that community and business aspect, as well as from um, the, the school aspect as well. And bringing everybody together and really bridging that gap is really important. I just love that. It's such a holistic approach, this work. Um, it's just truly vital. Um, so while reducing youth tobacco use is an urgent issue, we understand the Alliance for Healthier Generation tackles several critical issues when it comes to protecting kids, health and wellness. Um, as a former teacher, now a policy specialist focusing on healthy environments for kids, what are some of the other issues that warrant more attention and focus? The challenges that students face require a more robust approach than the traditional focus on physical activity and nutrition. Our work at Healthier Generation is guided by a whole child health model. And I want to repeat that again, whole child health, which looks uh, like all different aspects of health, which includes physical activity, mental health, and social emotional health. This ensures a well-rounded approach that meets the diverse needs of each individual student. That is great. So I want to repeat that as well. Uh, a whole child health model. Um, when we think about engaging with young people, um, we have to really look at that holistic uh, approach, um, understanding that where young people are is not necessarily where they're going and, and how we could support in creating a, a healthier them uh, for tomorrow. Um, so I really love that that model and that structure. And I and just again, uh, so grateful to be able to partner alongside of you uh, in this great work. Siobhan, what is one piece of advice you would give to advocates out there looking to improve health equity within their communities? My advice is to connect with the community partners, to listen and to learn about health related issues that are facing that specific community. Every community is different. So it's really important to go in listening and learning about what those issues are in that community and to discuss a plan to provide equitable support. Do not go into a community with an already identified plan and be sure to meet the community where they are. 
That is so just such really great advice um, through connecting, listening, learning, um, really, truly meeting community where they are and building um, plans together uh, to really advance this work. Um, Siobhan, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, we love learning about the Alliance for a Healthier Generation, and we really look forward to continuing our work together to promote, to promote healthier tobacco-free communities. Follow Tobacco Free Kids and the Alliance for Healthier Generation on social media at the handles below and check out more unfiltered conversations about tobacco use and advocacy within communities most impacted by big tobacco's tactics at tfk.org forward slash C4TC. Thank you all for joining us today. And thank you all as well. Have a wonderful day. <laughs>